This is Selma Schimmel at the American Association for Cancer Research in Chicago reporting for the Group Room. We are joined now by Professor Jack Samatiki, epidemiologist at the University of Montreal Hospital Research Center, Canada Research Chair and Professor in the Department of Social and Preventative Medicine, the Guzzo Chair in Environmental Cancer Research, Adjunct Professor in the Department of Epidemiology and Biostatistics at McGill University in Canada. Welcome. Thank you very much. Thank you for joining us because we're going to talk about a hot subject, which is do cell phones cause brain cancer? There's been so much controversy about this. There has indeed from the very beginning. Uh, the first uh, traces of controversy arrived in the early 90s, uh, soon after cell phone usage took off in, uh, in America. And there were a few anecdotal reports back then of people who had brain tumors and had used cell phones and they or their spouses or families thought that there must be a link and uh, the, uh, the controversy snowballed to the point where U.S. Congress actually mandated the National Cancer Institute to carry out studies on the topic. So where is the data today? Well, it, it's very, it remains controversial, and um, part of the purpose of today's uh, symposium is to confront different points of view. Uh, my own feeling is that uh, there is no compelling evidence that there is a relationship between cell phone use and brain cancer, but there are some pieces of evidence that uh, still point in that direction and that have not been uh, f adequately explained. Is the safest way not to use one cell phone using speaker or even an earbud? Yes, it is. Uh, in fact, uh, there is radio frequency field, there are radio frequency fields generated by a cell phone. They're generated from the antenna of the cell phone and within a very small radius they are measurable. Really within about an inch or two you can measure these fields. Further than that it drops off with the inverse square uh, distance and uh, it's barely measurable. And uh, so if people uh, use the some sort of mechanical device for uh, connecting the earbud to the phone, the, there is no uh, exposure whatsoever uh, near the head. That, for me, mm. or using it on speaker is my favorite way. I see a lot of people running around with their Bluetooth, mm -hmm. even when they're not on the phone. Yeah. What's the truth on um, the Bluetooth technology and risk? Well, I'm not a physicist, so I, I don't know from first hand, but what my colleagues tell me is that uh, bl the Bluetooth device does also generate some radio frequency fields. But the, uh, when you use Bluetooth, it has to s uh, look for a signal about two or three feet away at the site of the, the, uh, the cell phone, mm -hmm. if you're holding it down near your hip. Whereas uh, from the cell phone to the base station, it may be looking for a signal a mile, two miles, or three miles away. The strength of the field is somehow proportional to the distance that it has to look for the signal. So it's a, a, a very, very much smaller uh, radiation uh, field that's generated. But again, the safest way is that earbud yes. or, the, or the leaving yes. it on speaker. So what about all these uh, gentlemen that run around with their Blackberries and uh, cell phones on their hip mm. and having it on your body, you know, so many hours of a day, do you think that that is also uh, questionable? Th there certainly is zero evidence concerning any risks associated with that kind of exposure. Uh, so uh, I, I don't worry about it. I use it that way myself and I don't worry about it. Uh, one might think of it this way, if there is a risk, and I, it's, if it's underlined, uh, that risk would be multiplied against a background risk. The background risk for tumors in the hip area is almost zero, whereas 
for the brain, there is right. a background risk. And so if there was an excess related to cell phone usage, it would multiply against that. And so there would be some concern. Mm -hmm. But in areas of the body where you don't get tumors, I wouldn't worry about it at all. Today we see so many young people adolescents and teenagers, you know, and even kids younger than adolescents who have their own cell phones. And yeah. I guess we really don't know about the developing brain as much as the adult brain. Right. There is some uh, biological evidence that the, the, ch the child's brain would might be more sensitive if there is a hazard. Mm -hmm. uh, and therefore, one might be more concerned about children using it if they use it chronically and uh, for long periods of time. So in closing, is this a matter now that, you know, the mm -hmm. data just doesn't support risk in such a huge way? Do you see this debate coming to an end or is this ongoing research? It's certainly ongoing research. I think that there are schools of thought that are invested in different points of view and they're not going to disappear uh, very soon and it's hard to prove the negative, it's hard to prove that something doesn't happen uh, and so I think there, it'll be a while before we resolve this one. And, and the truth is technology is technology and devices and yeah. such, we're not going to be getting rid of them. No, we're not going to be re getting rid of them. I mean there, there are approximately as many cell phones in use in America as there are people now. So it's... Uh, it's here to stay. It's here to stay, in some form. Thank you, Professor Jack Simiatiki. And I hope that if there's new data that comes out, you'll share it with us here in the group room. With pleasure.